Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today is a glorious day. It's May 12th, 2020, and the latest Logic update has just dropped. It's a major one, 10.5 and I couldn't be more stoked. There are so many features in here, and I'm just learning about this with the rest of the world. So I'm just gonna kind of fumble through and just try to show off what I know and what I'm learning about, and hopefully you'll be as pumped as I am. Now, two notes to point out before we get started. Before you head over to the App Store with the intent of updating, let's first look at the minimum system requirements for Logic Pro 10.5. It requires a Mac OS of 10.14.6 or later. Now, I know that might be a huge bummer for those of us who can't update to those latest OSs. I recognize that. I feel for you. Also, it's worth pointing out that in the Logic release notes, the Apple release notes for Logic, there's always a link at the top. There are step-by-step -step instructions for how to back up your current version of Logic. And this is well worth the couple minutes that you're going to take just to basically compress the file and set it aside. Let's say that you download 10.5 and your Logic projects start going bonkers. You know, things just start breaking you need a way to get back to that old version of Logic. If you just update without backing up Logic, then you're kind of stuck. You're going to have to, you know, find someone to help you out. That's why I highly suggest checking out the release notes, especially for all the cool stuff that 10.5 now includes and all the fixes, but especially for backing up your current version of Logic. Okay, so let's dig into Logic 10.5. Out of the gate in the new template window, we have two new options for a new project, either an empty project or a live loops project. So we'll dig in the live loops a little later. We also have new starter grids that totally focus on live loops. We now also have tutorials to help us get acquainted with different functions in Logic, such as live loops, sampler, step sequencing, which we'll also dig into. I definitely think this is a brilliant move by Apple and the Logic team, and hopefully they'll expand on this section. Under demo projects, in my Bex Colors video, I was lamenting, you know, why doesn't Apple give us more professionally mixed, mastered, produced tracks? And now the Bex Colors project has been replaced with a Billie Eilish track, which is just amazing. And under the project templates, all the usual suspects. So let's dig into a brand new project here. So out of the gate, I'm just going to create a typical audio track. And for those of us who are more into electronic production, hip hop, more sampler heavy production, more non-linear production, I think you are gonna be so stoked on this update. First, let's just drag in some Apple loops. This will be the easiest option. And if we click on the loop types button here, we have a new loop type called pattern loops. So I'm gonna select that and we'll dig into patterns. I'm gonna to try to find some drums. And let's just see, I'm gonna probably drag this down to 80 BPM and let's see what some of these sound like. Well, that already sounds amazing. So let's populate this and let's crank it down to 70. Let's try to find a bass track. So we're just sticking with the pattern loops as well. So check it out. Cool, I'll just stick with this one. That is so awesome. Check out some of the piano sounds here. I think that would be cool. So let's check it out. A little crazy, but that's fine. I'm going to split the loop right here with the playhead. All right, so now let's dig into live loops. We have two new views of our project. We have a live loop view and we have our main view. Live loops is more of a grid-based non-linear production where the main window is as we have always known it. You know, bars, time-based, going left to right. I'm gonna select these loops and I'm going to drag them into the grid view. And I'm gonna collapse the main view for now. So let's zoom in here, which I really dig this. So now we have our loops in these sort of column-based production schedules, we'll call it. And if I just click on the arrow down here, we can hear our production. And we can drag loops around from different columns. 
We can also just hold option, click and drag, do copy and paste, which is pretty slick. And this is more of an Ableton style of production. I mean, it's nonlinear, it's based on loops and grids. And I know from receiving a lot of emails that many folks have been waiting for this style of production in Logic. So I think a lot of folks are gonna be happy about it. You can even record into a grid as well. So let's mute this piano track and I'll introduce something like, and I'll introduce something like, let's bring in alchemy. So we can find more of like a horn stab type of thing. So I'll select brass. That's fine. And let's record into a cell. <laughs> you can tell that I'm an amazing piano player. But it's cool because now we've recorded these MIDI performances right in here. You can record audio as well. And now we can play it along with our production. Since that's got awful, let's open the main track view. Let's populate this over to the main track view. So drag it right in. Cool. And let's just set this up so it doesn't sound idiotic. Cool. And then I'll repeat it a whole bunch and we'll make sure to quantize it as well. So let's now get rid of the cell, drag it back in. That's not what I expected, but that's actually interesting. Cool, I think a lot of folks are gonna be pumped on this. I wanna dig into some of the other features, which for me, the, the top line is the step sequencer. So let's collapse the grid view here. And it's worth pointing out that these regions now in our main track window seem to be muted. And if you hover your mouse right over this middle section here, seem to be able to switch between does it play in the live loop section or does it play in the main tracks window? And we switch it. Mute that. It's an interesting... It's an interesting sort of separation in production. So it's worth keeping that in mind that maybe some loops are playing in the other view and not the main tracks view, or it's playing in the main tracks view and not the live loops view, just to keep that in mind. Let's dig into step sequencing here. Let's loop this step sequencer here and just double click. And now we have not just a piano roll, an actual step sequencer, which I have been waiting for. As soon as I saw a lot of these features in GarageBand iOS, I was like, why do we not have this in Logic? So it's great to see this gap being bridged. What I love about the step sequencer is it just makes more sense to my brain. It's a grid-based view. You're able to remove notes by clicking on them, add notes by clicking on them. Which is so sick. You're able to adjust the resolution on a per instrument lane. So quarter note. And let's select this track and zoom in on it so we can see what's going on here. So I'll switch this back to a 16th note. You can see that it's been updated. The clap will change to quarter, which is so sick. You can also adjust the resolution for the whole production here. So you can see more of like 30 second steps, more 16th, which is amazing. We also have more of a library view within the step sequencer as well. And if you select Right over here next to the step on off, we have velocity and value, which changes the view just a little bit. We can adjust the velocity of each note. So let's crank up the claps. You're also able to set note repeat, which is something I have been waiting for for a long time. I just find programming drums makes way more sense in a sequencer than a piano roll. So let's set this to maybe three hits. Sounds kind of weird, so let's set it on a hi-hat. So sick. We can also adjust the chance. So do we want this clap to play every time the loop plays? If you're working on a loop-based production, let's switch to the main view here and collapse this down, repeat. And let's set this to, you know, maybe like, we're like 40% of the time. Cool.
This is a whole new world for drum production, especially for electronic and hip hop. Let's move forward into more of the sampler instruments. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to open up the Apple Loops library and we'll pick another drum sound. And actually, let's switch it back to all the loops. And I'm just going to pick like a jazz drum thing. Cool. So let's drag it over to the track header. And now we have different drag and drop options. We can either create a new quick sampler, a new drum machine designer, or alchemy within its different variations for synthesizing. I'm going to pick the quick sampler. Optimize. We have original and optimize. Optimize kind of optimizes your sampler instrument for the production you're working on, the project. This is the new quick sampler, which I am just freaking blown away by. I'm so pumped about this. So we are able to record into the sampler or drag and drop into the sampler, and it even slices up. So we could have a one shot of the whole loop. We can slice it up based on transients, which is so sick. So let's bring this up and let's make sure. There we go. Let me unsolo. So let's get rid of that marker there. Love it. Now we have a much more intuitive and easier way to work with a sampler instrument, which I have just been waiting for this to happen. It's so cool. So you're able to set the slices on a per transient mode. You can set the snap to zero crossing, transient note or beat. So let's set it to zero crossing. You can even crop the sample or loop, which is really helpful. So let's select this kick sound here and adjust the coarseness. which is so cool. We can add a filter. So sick. And then we can even go to the gear here and create a new drum machine designer track using the sampler. Now, drum machine designer is not a new instrument for many of us, but there was kind of like a contentious feeling towards drum machine designer. It was more of a face for alter beat and that is now changed. It's no longer just a face for alter B, and it's much more what we would expect for a drum machine designer. So we've now exported the sampler instrument of the quick sampler to drum machine designer. And if we click on one of the notes here, we now have a sampler view for each one of the hits, which is amazing. Here we go. We also have detail control. And what I love about this is, is you can zoom in really easily. You can adjust the fade for the waveform. You can adjust the start and end of the waveform to really fine tune the sample how you want it to be. So we can drag this out. You can also adjust the playback. So let's go back to the kick drum here. Let's zoom in, let's adjust the fade and let's set this to reverse. That is so freaking awesome. And you can record into it as well. So let's set a new quick sampler here, create. And I'm gonna record into this. We'll use the recorder and I'll set my input to my microphone here. We'll just see what happens. Here we go. Hey, oh! That is gonna be awful, but check it out. Playing it forward. That is so freaking cool. Let's just check it out. You know, this isn't a deep dive, unfortunately, just because there's so much to go over, but it's just incredible that we now have this much easier sampler. We have this much easier experience with Drum Machine Designer. I never was a huge fan of Ultra Beat, to be honest, just because, you know, it looks so overwhelming. I was never a huge fan of the EXS24 just because it seemed very overwhelming. But for those of us who are desiring the EXS experience, there's also the multi-sample sampler. And this is a direct replacement for the EXS24. It's a much more modern view of the instrument, but it's just as in depth. And we have different sections that we can turn on and off. So we can open up the mapping, turn off the modulators, open up zones, you can fly between them. Let's just grab another loop here. So jazzy drum set, drag it in. We can drag it across the keys so we can play it across a variety of keys here. We can layer different samples. So let's drag the next one, layer it, drag it across. And it's probably going to be kind of loud. So let me just drag this way down. Here we go. 
and we can adjust for pitch, volume, pan, etc. It's just so slick. And what I also love is the updated icons for each of the tracks. We have a variety of new other icons, sound effects, and these icons update to the color of the track. So let's set it like that. Beautiful. That is so brilliant. Just the little details that really make a big difference. Now let's select this jazzy drum kit. I'm going to select the region and just drag it. Now I've dragged it off of the current track lane and Logic has updated with a new track lane of the exact same track stack with the plugins, with the routing. And that's so awesome. How often have you wanted to just hold option, click and drag a region and just have a track created with everything just duplicated? Another feature that I think a lot of folks are going to be pumped about is the new drum synth. So drum synth, how often have you wanted to be able to have a kick drum that you could play up and down the piano keys? So let's pitch up the kick here. Check it out. We can adjust the tone. It is so awesome. And we have different sounds for kicks, snares and claps. This is really a producer's dream right here. The new samplers, the new drum machine designer layout, the new instruments, the new live loops feature. It's also worth pointing out that the new EXS successor, the new sampler, also allows for auto mapping, which was a feature that only was included in main stage. Auto mapping allows us to take external MIDI instruments, plug them into our interface via a MIDI connection, and then have Logic send a series of notes to the instrument having the outputs of the instrument plugged into your audio interface, and then Logic samples the instrument. And if we click on the zone section, we have this feature for auto mapping. So you can auto map based on a variety of details from current root note to pitch detection, all the way to velocities only. This is a feature I know a lot of folks have been waiting for, to be able to pull in their external synths and samplers into Logic. We have a huge amount of new electronic drum kits to work with, so I select the tight trap here and you can see, my gosh, there are so many electronic drum kits to choose from. It is freaking awesome. And we also have a new Remix plugin, Remix FX, that again was from GarageBand iOS. And now we're fully compatible with GarageBand iOS. So I'm going to just play around with the Remix effects here. <clears throat> So obviously this is a tool that could be useful with automation. So let's turn on the automation lane, turn this on and set it to touch maybe. Here we go. So freaking cool. Let's switch this to read. One other interesting detail that I came across in the release notes that surprised me quite a bit is we now have a slip editing feature. All I've been able to find is a key command for it right now. So just in case that's not correct, you know, I apologize. But let's check it out. Let's just slice along the regions here. And if we go to the key command window, we type in slip. We can slip right by nudge value and by left. So holding control option, left or right arrow. So check it out. Let's just zoom in right here. And I'm going to hold control option left arrow. And we're able to slip at it. I'm kind of hoping that there's like a easy key command where you hold option and shift and you just kind of drag back and forth on the region itself. But that is pretty freaking slick. Again, there's so much to dig into. There's so many parameters. I, you know, I'm just learning about this at the same time that you are. So bear with me, but... I am so pumped on 10.5. I think this solves a lot of issues. I'm very excited for it. Very excited to get down to producing and writing with these tools. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.